Hey there, welcome to episode 61. Hey, I'm calling this one a bonus episode. So listen up to the first bonus episode just for subscribers. Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple or at least simpler. Join me, your host, Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media, and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. Gonna dream it, dream it, beat the someone out there listening. Everyone's got a voice to give, and it's time I heard you whistling, cause there's no point at all. Oh, oh, oh. And dreaming small. Welcome to the first of many bonus episodes of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. If you're a first time listener, then this isn't the normal way I do things. This is a bonus episode, the one that only subscribers get notified about. So if you've happened to have stumbled across it by accident, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more episodes, including bonus ones like this. So why bonus episodes, you might be asking? Well, I've got two reasons. Two reasons really. Firstly, I want to give you as much value as I can for free via my podcast, but I also want to give just a wee bit more to my loyal listeners, and that's you because you've subscribed, because you've been notified about this podcast. Secondly, well, today, because you need to hear this and it's really hard to blow your own trumpet, and I'll let you know a little bit more about that. So this recording is actually an interview I did with Kelly Briggs. So I was the interviewee, not the interviewer. Kelly has uh, the Business Networking by Design podcast. If you haven't checked it out already, go over and check it out. Uh, After, of course, you've listened to this one. Kelly gave me the privilege of being a guest on her show, actually her first guest on her show. So I really wanted to share it with my audience too. Because I truly believe in all my heart that a rising tide lifts all boats. So if I can support Kelly in her business and her business journey by sharing this with my audience, then I think that is absolutely perfect. And secondly, again, it's really hard to blow your own trumpet on your own podcast. Every week you hear tips and tricks that I have. I share my knowledge. I help you simplify your business. But what you don't hear or you don't see is necessarily things that are happening in my my business behind the scenes. How I'm pretty much just like you. I'm pivoting, I'm stretching, I'm testing, I'm measuring, doing all these things in my business and struggling at times. But when someone else asks you those tricky questions on their podcast, you have no choice but to answer. So that's why I wanted to share it. So sit back, relax and enjoy my first bonus episode where I am the interviewee, not the interviewer, which I can tell you was a bit of a strange thing. So here goes, what's and all, enjoy. From having zero to 200,000 members in a Facebook community in just four months? Well, today I'm talking to a very special guest who has done just that. She's grown a Facebook community from zero to 200,000 people in just four months. Not only that, the community she's created has helped hundreds of business owners around Australia generate thousands of dollars for their families. Today, I'm speaking to business owner and a movement creator, Jen Donovan, of the Small Business Made Simple podcast and the hugely viral Facebook group, Buy From a Bush Business, which is created as a part of the Buy From the Bush campaign here in Australia. In this episode, we look at all the ways Jen has stepped out of her comfort zone and as a result, created incredible opportunities, not only for herself, but for those in her network as well. Welcome to episode 42 of Business Networking by Design, where today we will see firsthand what can happen when you have an amazing, amazing idea, you step out of your comfort zone and you just take action. Tried networking to grow your business? Well, not this way you haven't. Welcome to Business Networking by Design. My name is Kelly and I truly believe that we are stronger in business when we work together. Let me help you take the fear and the fake out of networking so that you can build genuine business relationships in a way that feels right for your business and your personality. So let's dive in. Hi, 
everyone and welcome to today's episode. It's such an exciting episode because I've got my very first guest ever on the show today. Today I'm talking to Jen Donovan, who is one truly amazing woman. Jen is a social media and marketing expert for small businesses, a podcast host of the Small Business Made Simple podcast, a Facebook group creator and host of two very successful groups. And by successful, I mean it went from zero to 200,000 members in just a matter of months, which is something that we will be talking about today. She's also a speaker, a mentor and a coach. And even though we only met last year, I can't say enough about Jen when it comes to business. She is one of the most creative, innovative and proactive people that I know. She's a fellow Aussie and even though she's on the opposite side of the country, we just click straight away. But what I love most of all is that Jen is a rare down-to-earth person who doesn't even know how truly amazing she really is. I hope that by the end of this episode, you'll be truly inspired to try new things and break through any barriers that you have that's stopping you from building a business that you love. Hi, Jen. How are you going? Welcome to the show. Thanks, Cal. Goodness me, you nearly made me cry. Ah, <laughs> what a gorgeous <laughs> intro! <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. It is so so true. That is truly how I feel about you. So, um, I'm a hard on the sleeve type of girl. So, I'm coming out there with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so lovely, and what a pleasure to be on your podcast. I've been loving your podcast. You know how much I love your podcast. Uh, so, it's a bit of a pleasure to be on chatting with your audience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, me being a networker, I was trying to work out how we originally met and I thought it was through fa- a Facebook group they were in together. Do you remember it all? Um, I think it was through um, Amy Porterfield's Facebook group and ah. then we got put into a LinkedIn pod. Oh, it was LinkedIn. Kind of thing. Yeah. 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 And it was kind of like, oh, another Aussie, which is like, oh, how very exciting. You exactly. know, I'm always excited exactly. when I find another Aussie yeah. um, doing great things. So I think that was in, that's in my recollection of how we originally touched base. That's right. It was, it was, it was the, in, it was the Amy Porterfield group, LinkedIn, and then we just kind of connected from there. So mm-hmm. yeah, that was good. Okay. Well, that's, that's a form of networking that actually really worked <laughs> online, didn't it? <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> So, Jen, I've told them a little bit about you, but I just want you to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be in social media and marketing. Oh, Cal. Okay. I guess the short version. Um, So um, I live on a farm. I'm the worst farmer's wife in the world. And I can't believe (laughs) I just said that on a podcast. But um, yeah, I live on a farm um, in uh, the Riverina in New South Wales. Uh, I originally started in law. I spent my first 15, 16 years of my working career working in law. And as the story goes, my best friend and I, who had been my best friend since I was 14, had waited too much wine to drink one night and we decided to quit our jobs and buy a retail shop and that's exactly what we did within about two weeks we had organized uh, banks and bought a shop and that's probably where my love for social media and marketing came in because when I was working in law running my conveyancing firm I didn't have to advertise I didn't have to market there was kind of work just flowed so I didn't learn many lessons there but certainly in retail in a small rural area in a regional town I learned lots and lots of lessons. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much where uh, I started on social media. But back then, Facebook was a lot easier to get traction. And, you know, so the lessons sort of came hard and fast as uh, Facebook grew and we grew too. Um, And then when we sold the business, I went into helping other small business owners because I knew how hard it was. And I just thought if I could just teach them one or two little things to help them grow their business, then, um, you know, my job would be done. My goal that sits, uh, you know, in my desk here is, you know, I want to change the world one small business owner at a time. So that's what keeps me motivated. And that's such a such a beautiful message um, with that. And because what a journey that you've had, like going from working in a legal sector to then a retail shop. And that story sounds very Australian, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then going to and, and, you know, and then going on to teach people what you've learned, because obviously as well in in a rural setting, you've had to face more challenges in business and people in your area have to change, have to face more challenges in business than people in a lot of different areas. So it's kind of like a challenging area to get into. And I, I love it. I think it's been, I think it's great. 
what do you think with um, marketing is so broad, like the topic of marketing and social media is so broad. What do you think is your zone of genius or your superpower when it comes to helping businesses with their marketing and social media? Oh, gosh, Cal, what a question. I know. I like the hard ones. (laughs) My, I always had a mentor when I had my retail shop. Uh, You know, I always invested in learning and uh, my mentor always taught me that marketing was everything. So for me, that's what marketing is. You know, he used to say, everything you do says something about you, whether you meant it or not. And I I've kind of embraced that in both my journey Mm. and also in my customer's journey and my client's journey. It's kind of like, you know, marketing is everything. It's the way you answer the phone. It's the way that you you do your captions on social media. It's the way you look at, you know, not so much as in pretty or not pretty, but, you know, do you look professional for the job that you are? Yeah, your image. Yeah, your image and things like that. So my zone of genius, I guess, is making social media marketing simple. Like I, I just want to make it simple and I want people to make it a priority. So they're the yeah, two messages, absolutely. the two drums that I keep beating. Let's make it a priority and let's make it as simple as we can. I think I suppose when it comes to that area too, and I know certainly with myself that it's so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of social media that if you're not making a making it a priority or not making marketing a priority, it's easy for it to like just fall by the wayside and, you know, it just doesn't happen for you. And I know myself, like, uh, you know, I plan my social media out in advance and things like that, but it doesn't take much to upset the apple cart. And then you're, you know, you're getting into that hustle and bustle of having to find a post to put up every day and, you know, those sorts, those sorts of things. So I think, um, you know, being able to help businesses in an area that can generate so much positivity and so much, um, I suppose, profitability in their business, having a method or having a way to be able to do that is is really awesome. Now, I, I wanted to just jump in here and say that because I saw last year, was it last late last year or early this year, you have a Facebook marketing course. So is that some, a Facebook ads marketing course? Sorry. Yep. Is, that, is that something that you're looking at going into in the future is like teaching business owners how to do their, their Facebook ads? Yeah, look, it's probably just one of those things that I keep coming up against. I, you know, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in small business that I, you know, like to sort of teach as well is you've just got to listen to the market. So I do lots and lots of workshops with small business owners. I travel around rurally and do these things. And so often if I talk about Facebook ads, because I don't believe in boosting, I'm just going to put that out there. That's just <laughs> like giving Mark Zuckerberg more it's, money for his holiday. Like it just, It's not a thing anymore, is it, boosting? <laughs> No, no, it just look, you know, 99% of the time it won't work. 1% it just might work. But but people were afraid of the um, platform, afraid of the ads platform because it was just so confusing. There were so many different buttons. And, and so I guess I listened to my audience and I thought, Radio, if I could just get them to look at the ads platform and to hold their hand, walk them through it, then that will be something that can really help them. So I guess that's where that course came from, just hearing people going, no, you know, far too hard, far too complicated. And it's like, well, it's really not. So let me hold your hand and we'll walk through it together. Absolutely. And I think any time that you can offer something to someone that saves them time of having to go and learn those things themselves. And that's a benefit, isn't it? Because as small business owners, we just have to do so much ourselves. And a lot of people don't have staff or they don't outsource things like that. So especially in the early stages, but to be able to have someone that has, you know, to to follow someone that has a course and can just kind of walk you through it like they're holding your hand, but you're doing it for your own business. um, I think that's really great. And I remember when I first started my uh, first company in about 2011, to go on and do Facebook ads, there was really only like one type of ad or one type of option, you know, or maybe one or two. I don't even know at that very early stage whether the pixel was around or not. Um, that's how that's how far we're kind of going back with it. It probably was. But um, now you go on there and it's been a time, like even in the 12 months that I had from my business, like a gap, going back on there and looking at the ads platform there, it's phenomenal now. Like the amount of different types of ads you can choose that I think that that's one thing that I, I have not gone into yet within my own business because I look at it and I'm like, wow, I don't even know where to start or what I would choose. And, you know, you can sink so much money into something without um, much reward if you don't know what you're doing. 
Yeah, and look, yeah. and some of the, the options are a little bit misleading as well, which is you know part of the course that I did in that you know if we take a um a, an ad uh, that you want traffic to your website, for instance, it's so it's a traffic ad that's the objective, but it doesn't actually guarantee that anything will happen when you get to your website because the algorithm is yes. just looking for people who will who are more than likely to click within the demographics you've given it. Who's most likely to click a link? This person is. But are they the most likely person to buy? So people do these yeah. ads, they get lots of traffic to their website but still no sales and that's like it's not their it's not the ad's fault. The ad did exactly what you wanted it to do. It got traffic to your website. Yeah. It was then up to you to make sure that there was something on there that they really wanted to buy. So sometimes the ads platform is a little bit confusing because you think you're choosing the right objective and you perhaps are, but you're not thinking the whole process through. And then I think it makes something like what you do so important is the fact that, you know, you can, you need to know the ads, but you also need to have, have a great converting page on the other side of that on your website. So, um, and, and that's where the rest of the marketing knowledge <laughs> kind of comes into that, isn't it? Yeah. You go, yeah. Oh, phew, I set up my Facebook ad. But now I've got to make sure my page is right. <laughs> yeah. So you can see how it becomes a little bit overwhelming if you don't have someone to sort of help you through this and hold your hand as yeah. you go along. But yeah. Absolutely. I think long gone are the days we're expected to learn everything ourselves. And like, I truly believe in finding those mentors and finding those people that know what you're wanting to do and like, and learning from them. So, you know, there is no prize for being the person that has to stay up the latest or gets the most, gets the least sleep and things like that. But there is a prize for someone who, you know, knows who they need to follow and they, they learn the knowledge they need to, to make their business a success. Absolutely. So, Find your tribe. Yeah. Find your tribe. Find your tribe. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've been a business owner in some of the toughest economic times in Australia. Um, not only that, you, as you've mentioned, you live in the rural community, which can be really challenging for small business owners. And I was wondering if you could talk about some of the struggles that business owners in rural communities face when they're trying to run a business. Yeah, look, in some ways it is, but then, you know, here I am in the Riverina talking to you who's in Perth and, you know, yeah. it's just perfect. It feels like, you know, you're yeah. kind of in the next room. So, um, exactly. so there, you know, the world that we live in now makes businesses like mine achievable. Uh, you know, I guess five years ago, even perhaps my business, I would have had to have hired a room in the local town um, because I just wouldn't have had the service, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi service or something like that to do this. But I guess um, in rural towns, I have this, obviously, the Riverina, most of New South Wales and Queensland are in drought at the moment. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, some people are in drought that have just got flooded out, um, which is just yeah. you know, one of those curveballs that have been thrown. It's kind of like a thing of extremes at the moment, isn't it? Fires, <laughs> droughts, floods. Mm, yeah. So I guess I've always, I always say, you know, if the farmers don't have money, these rural towns don't have money. It's just the way it is. If you're, if you're relying right. on the agriculture around you to keep a town alive, then if the farmers are struggling, then then all the towns people, you know, tend yep. to struggle. And it's like a thing of dominoes, you know. Um, yeah, if you don't spend money at the bakery, then the bakery hasn't got money to go and, and spend at the supermarket and it just ebbs and flows. Yep. So um, I guess so. that sort of brings back um, the opportunities of people to sell to. So, you know, if the rural towns are struggling and certainly around me, like the fires weren't that close, but somewhere like I might go to Bright for, you know, a couple of day trips over Christmas, well, that didn't happen because the fires were up there. So they really yeah. rely on the tourism and they didn't get it. So, you know, yeah, the most busiest time of the yes, year. Yes. Yeah. So they've yeah. really sort of struggled. And, you know, most of them, like, I think small businesses in Australia account for 97% of all businesses, but I think micro right. businesses, so just me businesses, um, you know, maybe a mum and dad team or a single person. I think that's nearly half of what small businesses are. So because you're doing everything, you know, the local shop might necessarily have a website that they can reach a broader audience with. Maybe they do just purely rely on the people walking through the door. And if the people aren't walking through the door, then that just has such a big effect yeah. on, on their cash flow. Yeah. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So what are some of the, and I know you've talked about it a little bit with how you're working and, you know, we're here talking on the internet together, um, but what are some of the innovative solutions that you've kind of seen that some of the farmers may have or, or rural business communities may have implemented that has given them a boost to their business? Yeah, look, it, personally, I've seen a lot of really great collaborations uh, between businesses that they've joined forces and sort of mass marketed together. So exchanging of email lists or, uh, you know, taking over each other's social media accounts and just trying to attract a, a bigger audience. Um, I've seen a real uh, platforms like Shopify and that have really enable oh, yes. people to have a website that they can kind of build themselves, they can control themselves and it has enabled them to go online and perhaps potentially sell some goods that way as well. Yeah, I guess, you know, we're on a networking podcast, like that is one of the biggest ways that you yeah. can grow your business quite quickly is by, you know, networking, getting your business out there and putting yourself out there. Finding, like, I, I know I mentioned Find Your Tribe earlier, but I just think yeah. you've got a great group of people around you to support you through good times and bad. That is, you know, one of the best things you can do whilst you're in business. Absolutely. And that, you know, you're a one after my own heart. So um, <laughs> with your finding your tribe and building your support network around yourself. Um, yeah, I just, I love it. And speaking of finding tribes and things like that, um, we hit, we met in the second half of last year and we we've hit it off straight away but recently you've become rather internet famous <laughs> and you've cre- <laughs> and you've cre- <laughs> that's a that's a word my kids say <laughs> they think I'm internet famous I'm like no love I'm not <laughs> um, but you are Jen um, you've created a phenomenal Facebook group called buy from a bush business and that has grown from zero to 200,000 people in just a few months so I'm wanting to know what was the inspiration behind starting that Facebook community and what's that community you're about yeah that community is just massive and really goes to show a bit of a movement that is actually happening in our country at the moment but I guess the inspiration came from like I said I do workshops and I do quite a lot rurally and at that stage back in October I just come off a tour of um, uh, Narandra and Leeton and Hay and Griffith so some of them are very small sort of towns and they were very I kept hearing stories about doom and gloom. Like I said before, if the farmers don't have money, the towns don't have money. And they were all looking at a very bleak Christmas in their opinion. And it just, there was nothing uplifting happening. And um, I was driving home from Hay, which I think is, you know, two hours or something from where I am. And just this little tiny idea popped into my head. It's just like, I could start a group up for these people and they could just post their own things and then I could invite my friends and maybe, you know, I could get a bit of a community going there. So I went home, it was Friday night, I, you know, did all this and started a group up and I invited all my friends and I sent an email to, you know, all my clients that I'd seen in workshops that lived rurally and said, hey, you know, this might be a really good opportunity for you. Um, and then it kind of just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew and, grew and you know, know, in less than four months, you know, there's like 200,000 people in there. It's like 200,000 new family members that I seem to have. <laughs> well, I must say that even like, it, that's a phenomenal amount because I've been watching the figures grow because I've been in the group kind of, I think quite early, quite early on in the group when you send out some requests, I joined the group then and um, I've seen it just grow phenomenally each week. And just when you think it's kind of hit its peak, like I was kind of thinking, <laughs> okay, it's been Christmas now and a lot of people were, um, so the idea of that is for people that are in rural and remote, co- remote communities or drought affected or fire affected, probably flood affected now as well. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, yeah. Um, for them to post their things that they make or their businesses in that group and then hopefully other people from around Australia will buy those um, buy things from the group uh, to give us gifts and things like that instead of maybe going to some of the bigger, you know, chains that we usually go to around Christmas time for a shopping. Yeah, and I exactly. know for myself... I I I bought um, some. I've always wanted to try those beeswax wraps. Ah, you know, like is yes. it like Glad wrap? Yep. So from one of the businesses that advertised in there, I, I bought a couple of boxes of those, and I bought a few other things as well for people for Christmas that were just so different and. 
it made me feel so good to be able to know that I was buying from a business that where it was going to make a big difference to a person, like to a family. And, you know, I just thought it was a phenomenal idea. And I thought that after that, it would kind of hit its peak after Christmas. And I'm like, yes. oh, I'll be interested to see how the group goes next. But then in January or between the two times that I checked, you added 15,000 people to the group still. So it's still growing. Like every week this group is still growing. And I think it's such a phenomenal thing because the the craft and the art and the skills that people have in our community are, are so phenomenal that – I, I have no creative bone in my body, so um, I can't make any of those things. So I'm in complete awe when I see these teenagers and these farmers and families putting out these beautiful products for people to buy. And I kind of think to myself, why didn't we do this years ago? Like, why hasn't this been a thing forever? It's, yeah. it's genius. <laughs> Look, and um, yeah, it certainly has taken on a, definitely a, a life all unto itself. And in some ways, I probably shouldn't admit this live on a podcast, but I literally had no idea. I did not have the foresight to go, th- yeah. this was going to grow this fast. To me, it was a way of helping the people that I talked to and hoping that they would get a few extra sales. I did not have that, you know, that vision that it would grow this fast. And I guess my group is probably a little bit different in that there is lots and lots of groups on Facebook where people who hand make things can sell. So, you know, a a person who does macrame or knitting or sewing and and things like that. But my group was a little bit different in that because I'm an ex-retailer and know if farmers don't have money, towns don't have money, it was important to me that the person who's paying rent in the main street gets the opportunity to come and perhaps make some extra sales online as well because you know if we don't support those people then we'll have a whole heap of ghost towns certainly up and down the east coast of Australia so my group probably had a slight different tang to it because of that of who I was allowing to post into the group. Yeah, and I think what you say is, you know, you went into it completely unexpected, but you did it as, I mean, at that stage, you were just doing it kind of out of the the kindness of your own heart to really want to stimulate the economy for those towns that have been really affected. And in fact, as you say, you know, there's a lot of New South Wales and Queensland, Victoria, in fact, Western Australia has been in drought for many years. Mm. So, you know, there are a lot of people um, affected you know, buy those sorts of things and to be able to have that group where they can go in and um, and market their products and, you know, the rest of us who are living, like I live on the coast near the beach and, you know, even though we're in drought, we get a bit of hot days, but I can still walk over the beach and go for a swim, you know. So I am so far removed from those people that Mm -hmm. to be able to help in some way, it, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it, knowing that I could help in that way just by simply buying my presents online in this group than, you know, than say somewhere else. And I feel like, you know, you say you went into it without any, without really knowing what you were doing, but I think sometimes the best ideas come that way because you've had a feeling in your heart and your mind about something that you've wanted to do. And then you're just like, there's not been probably not that much thinking in terms of like procrastination about it or going, should I, shouldn't I, should I, should I? You just came back and did it. Mm. And look what's happened when you put yourself out there and you move out of your comfort zone and you you have an idea and you act on it, even though you don't know how to do it completely. You, You know, you start and you find out and you work it out along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that comes down to, again, like I was saying, you listening to your audience, you know, no matter what business you're in, you've got to listen to your customers. I, if, you know, I could have heard that and not heard it properly, but when you hear yeah. something continually and that was kind of the stimulation was, okay, I've heard this way too many times this week. Uh, you know, what can I possibly do? Um, and you know, my mentor always taught me a phrase, you know, ready, fire, aim, you know, just fire and then right. work it out as you go along. Work it out. <laughs> work it out like as you go I've along. Been a hamster in a wheel for three and a half months now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings me to my next point that I want to talk to you about, Jen. <laughs> Obviously, you are brilliant at social media uh, and marketing, which um, is based on such a strong foundation of you actually running your own business over time. But there's only so much time that you can devote to something like this that is taking up a lot of your time. So 
Is there any way that you've been able to take this, you know, this brilliant idea that you've had and then transfer that into some way that's going to be able to pay for the the massive time and effort that I suppose moderating a group of 200,000 people takes? Yeah, look, so I had um, one gorgeous lady, Brooke Purvis, um, reach out to me. She reached out to me probably four or five times saying, do you want some help? Do you want some help? And I'm like, no, I've got this. I've yeah. got this. You know, no, no, no. And, <laughs> um, so like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think you know, one day I had something, you know, quite upsetting happening in the group. And it was kind of, I guess I was at the end of my tether. And I actually sent her a message and say, do you want it? It's yours. I've had enough. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> and then I had a good night's sleep and I woke up but she became an admin with me and then she yeah. uh, you know um, Jacinta Davies who was a friend of hers came in and you know so now there's sort of three admins which has sort of yeah. helped a lot. We have introduced a VIP program into it because when it first started people just posted and I didn't sort of look after it too much at all it was very um, organic but then as it got bigger I found I, I woke up one morning and someone had put something really quite political in there and there was like 300 comments and they were getting nasty and angry and I was very upset and that was kind of like right so now I have to approve everything so I changed the group settings so now I have to approve everybody's posts so that's when it started to become quite a lot of work so one of the things to that was to start a VIP group so they pay a really small amount each month and they just get to go through I don't have to see their posts they know the rules and they just follow the rules in the group. So that has actually helped us in our moderating. Um, yeah. And, and also gives us a little bit of cash to reinvest. Like I, I want to do a podcast because I want to have people's stories told. Like some of the yeah, stories absolutely. that I get to hear are phenomenal. And so I really want to get that out to the big wide world. And I, you know, I'd like to do a website and a directory and a Google map, but all these things. So this little bit of money that's trickling in will actually help me reinvest invest into the movement and it really is a movement the country has almost changed its thinking of you know who they're going what the town what the country is actually all about and what it means to support someone and um, I just seem to have tapped into that emotion at the right time. With some, you mentioned before that you know you want to have a podcast with some of those positive stories on it and I think that is a brilliant idea because I know for myself, I get inspiration. I can learn things from people and I like to do that, but I get a lot of inspiration from hearing stories Mm -hmm. um, myself. So what are some of the stories? Like, can you give us an example of, you know, one or two of the families or the stories that have really stuck out in your mind? Yeah, look, probably as a general, the most general story that really sticks in my mind is people who message me and tell me their stories and say, but I just, I'm not quite sure whether I'm the fit for your, um, you know, for the group, uh, because they don't think they are the worst off, you know, the yeah. one lady who had lost her husband and she was feeding cattle and sheep every day. And, you know, she was feeling a little bit lost and she wasn't quite sure what to do. And, you know, her message went on and it, it looked, you know, it was very emotional and very tear-jerking but at the end of it she's like so I don't think I'm really I don't know whether I'm rural enough and it's kind of oh, wow. I, don't, I don't know whether you know I um you know whether I'm the sort of you know, do you think that I could come in your group maybe and sell a few things but I know I'm not the worst off and I hear that story continually there's yeah. always someone worse off and I think that's really a, a true Aussie and and perhaps a true Aussie bush spirit that you know there's always Absolutely. someone worse off than me so yeah. really I should just, you know, pull my big girl undies up and keep going type of thing. Yeah. So that's probably the story I, I hear continually. But like, there was one um, story about a lady in um, Queensland, and I honestly can't remember off the top of my head what she sold, but she put one post in our group and she wrote to me and she said that she had $15,000 worth of orders. Like she oh. said, you know, that's just, she said that's like three months for me and all I did was post once. And, and oh. that might be a rare 
share sort of story, but quite often, you know, people are like, you know, I've done more this month than what I've done all year online. And, and one of the other stories that really, I guess, sticks out to me was a lady who wrote to us and um, I'll try not to cry as I tell this story, but <laughs> she said that, um, you know, she's managed to come down on her antidepressants because she feels like she's found a community that understands what she's going through. Like, how do you cope with that? How do you think yeah. that such a, a small thing could make such a big difference? Like some of the stories are mind-blowing. And it just gives people that sense of connection, doesn't it? It really mm. gives them a sense of community and connection when, you know, some people live in towns that are so um, are so remote or removed from their neighbours that it's hard to get that connection. But at the same time, you might want people that are not your neighbours to be able to connect with, you know, you want people mm -hmm. that are different from you or in different places or that understand you, but are not right in your hometown. Because another thing that happens with small towns is that everyone knows your business in a small town as well. So, um, you know, finding other communities like that you can have an outlet in is just, you know, is brilliant. So, mm -hmm. and that and those stories that you've said, yeah, you go. I was just going to say that, you know, and then we have our artists who paint or do macrame or knitting oh. and they put those things up there, but it's just something they do. And then they're blown away at the, A, the sales, but B, the compliments of people going, oh my God, that's beautiful. You're so talented. And so for them, something they were just doing, all of a sudden they get uh, that extra pride in what they do. And it's like, oh, so people actually appreciate or people can see the talent or the work or the effort. And I think that has a whole different um a whole different reaction because it's not about money it's a it's about personal growth and you know that person feeling a little bit better about themselves than what they perhaps did beforehand yeah and i think that that's you know when i see people in that community and see those things there i kind of like i kind of got the impression that a lot of people that post might be farmers um or mm. farmers wives or farmers kids you know they live in those communities and then their wife or their kids I even saw some great kids businesses have an a creative outlet and then they post their things online as well so it's kind of like you know if the farmers if the farming's not working for them at that stage or it's not as profitable they still have some form of livelihood there that mm. they can contribute that's not related to the weather conditions or you know things you know things like that and I, I just saw people posting particularly after Christmas I saw a lot of businesses posting how thankful they were for the group because it it really did turn something that was going to be quite a disastrous Christmas for them into something that was like beautiful and positive and they said that they'll you know they'll remember it for the rest of their lives because mm -hmm. it wasn't that Christmas of hardship that they were expecting particularly in that time when you know we oh, the, the the fires were phenomenal a mm -hmm. lot of the country was cut off purely mm -hmm. because of you know the geographic location of the widespread of everything so yeah you know that added to the hardship of everyone so oh yeah, good that's job the community. Jen and that's the community yeah that's nothing really yeah. like I might have provided the platform at the start but that is like the community that has made it feel like that and you know made people's um the difference in people's lives People are certainly very open to buying, weren't they? Like someone yeah. would put a post up and there would be people wanting that product just to real like they would sell out of those kind of products. It was quite unexpected. But you need to take the credit too because you had the brilliant idea and you acted on it. And that's the biggest thing. You know, we see a lot in business that people have these ideas, but they don't act on it. So that's all you, Jen. <laughs> Ready, fire, aim, people. <laughs> Ready, fire, aim. I'm going to write that on a post-it note and stick it on my computer so I can remember that when I'm yep. having moments of, of self-doubt. So what would yep. be one piece of advice that you'd give a business owner wanting to start a successful Facebook group? Um, be prepared to give it some time these things you know my this buy from a bush business group it's the exception it's definitely not the rule I you know I on my podcast just the other week I was talking about how you know you can't just put you know one or two posts up on Facebook once a week or on Instagram and expect you know the sales to roll in and then of course I had a bit yeah. of giggle it's just like Oh, well, you know, there is one oh, way. Oh, maybe but... you can if you're in my group. <laughs> yeah. But it is the exception, not the rule. So I guess for anyone yeah. who's sort of wanting to, and I would highly recommend that, you know, a lot of people should build uh, a Facebook uh, group because simply – if not for nothing else, because of the algorithm that like you can get yeah. so much more traction. If I look at my group that actually belongs to my social media business, um, 
it, you know, I can get reach, say, oh, 60, maybe 75% of the people who belong to that group as opposed to a social media post where I only might get, you know, maybe 13, 12% of people to see my yeah. post. So even that yeah. alone is a good reason to start a group. It's a but, good reason. Um, but I guess you've got to sort of have, uh, a thought of what's going to be different. Why is your group going to be different to anyone else's group? And, you know, I guess for me, social media and marketing, there's one of us for probably nearly every corner in every street yeah, in yeah. Australia. So you do, you have to think, you know, what can I do different? What's your point of difference going to be? Um, and once you can sort of really hone in on that and create a group and find a community who uh, like attracts like. So find the people who are attracted to you. Absolutely. And I think that that's, I think one of the things though, that when I look at the success of your group and because I've got a Facebook group as well, and I'm going to, I'll be honest to say that it's a struggle sometimes mm-hmm. to be able, it's not a struggle in terms of like, I love having a group, but as a business owner, it's a struggle to prioritize it because you do need to get a lot of work to get, to do a lot of work, to get the interaction in it, particularly for a B2B business, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm sure. So I feel like um, I can recognize and acknowledge that work that's been done to be able to get that. But I, when I was looking at the reason why I thought yours was quite successful, was <laughs> quite successful, it's phenomenal, <laughs> um, <laughs> was I think that there was a, a story behind it. You know, there was a story that made the people joining the group feel an emotion. Yeah. And I think that that's what brought people in. And whether that emotion is because of the plight of the rural communities and wanting to buy these beautiful things and also having a bit of a being a bit sick of you know buying the same thing as everyone else does for people at Christmas and having having different options where you can support people I think people bought in to the story and the emotion of that and I think people running b2b groups can take away from that as well and go okay well what's my story behind running this group and what is it about me that brought people here and brings them together and as you say what is different about my group like how am I providing a community for people not just a place for people to like um you know spam people with what their businesses are in a lot of b2b groups but how can i foster a community and i feel like giving your story and having a story that arouses emotion in people to make them make a decision that they want to be in your community i think that that's a good step of uh, you know along the way and i feel like your group really did that with having a unique story and to take lessons from that in the b2b sector i think you know that's definitely something that can transfer over Yeah. And look, you know, I guess if you're thinking about starting a Facebook group, stop calling it a Facebook group. It's got to be a Facebook community. Just replace that group with community. And I think that should change your mindset as to right. you know, how much effort and energy you should be putting into it because they are your yeah. community. They are going to yeah. be the people that want to hear from you because obviously that you know they've come that far with you to join in somewhere that's a little bit more personal, a little bit more private and a little bit closer to you. I think because when I when I think about networking and I know what a lot of people think about networking, it's that very kind of sterile formal forming of relationships, but I kind of look at, you know, formulating your network as going around and hanging out with a bunch of your best friends, you know, mm-hmm. and then you're all working together to to work as a community to bring your businesses up together. And I think is what you say, it just made me think of when you said community, um, a Facebook community is, you know, you're going into a group and hanging out potentially with your besties. And yeah. if you look at it like that and you're hanging out with people that are not just acquaintances, because we know they kind of are, you don't know them that well. Mm-hmm. But if you go into the with that mindset that you're going and hanging with a bunch of friends because if they weren't going to be a bunch of your friends why would you do it because we all have the choice about who we want to hang out with and who we want in our network so I like that I like that changing that Facebook group to Facebook community so you can pick me up on that now every time I say Facebook group <laughs> being uh, a network it's a community yeah it is a community it is a community yeah yeah definitely so moving a little bit offline, um, I noticed this year as well that you've gone, um, that you've tried as well as, you know, establishing your group. You've had a, a corker of a six months, let me tell you, Jen. Um, you've built this beautiful group, but then you've gone and tried uh, networking and uh, hosting a networking event this year. So I have you tell and me that's... a little bit about... How, how did you go with that and, and why did you go with that and all those kinds of things? Oh, Cal, that was all you, I have to say, listening to your podcast and, you know, I, I'm not a networker. I will just say that hand on heart, networking makes me have that 
pit in my stomach yeah. of feeling out of my comfort zone. And, um, but I realized the power of it. I, I know I'm a business owner. I know that there is power in networking. So constantly having you in my ears telling me about the power <laughs> was definitely um, something that, you know, played with me. Um, and, I, and I guess it was a little bit strategic as well. I have a women in business hub that I run once a month and it was a, it's a membership thing. We get together once a month. And we talk business and it's very much a, a gorgeous community with amazing ladies with businesses doing amazing things. But I needed a feeder for it because, you know, I needed people to get to know the community, just not from what yeah. I was spreading the word. So it was kind of like strategically I could have a networking event and, you know, just let everyone get to know each other, but also let them know that there's this other little thing that's going on that maybe the occasional someone might be interested in taking their business or taking, you know, the community just that little step further. Um, I actually had a phone call this morning with a lady who came to my first ever networking event. And one of the things she said, which ties in so well with what we were just talking about is she said, it felt like I entered a room of family members I'd never met before. She just said it was just phenomenal. Everyone was so welcoming and so chatty and everyone came with the right mindset of community. No yeah. one came just to, or I don't think anyone came just to promote themselves, but people came with that, you know, mindset of I'm going to go and meet new community people and, uh, you know, see what I can learn and who I can meet and things like that. So I just thought that was beautiful to think of, you know, she felt like she was just coming in to meet 60 new families family members she didn't know existed. Exactly. That's just, that's beautiful. And I think it goes in line with, you know, if you don't have the people that are flowing into your business or that you don't have a lot of connections, then there is that opportunity to create your own networking events as well and attract yeah. people to them. So I used yeah. to do that in my business for, as a part of my business professionally. So I, it was a, a part of an income generating part of my business. And I really, really love that. And um, that aspect of it, um, you know, with you seeing people come and like gathering people in a room and just watching the, the sparks fly with all those connections being made. And I think that that's such a, a great thing to step out of your comfort zone, particularly being, <laughs> you know, a little bit cautious about networking and not really, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and not only just stepping out of your comfort zone to go to a networking event, to host a freaking networking event of like, I think 50 people came, didn't they? Or yeah, something six, like that. So or something like that. 65. But, <laughs> but I think people, no, that's so probably... going from not doing <laughs> I think uh, if anyone's listening and they think, oh, you know, I don't like networking, I, you know, it makes me nervous, I can't do networking, start your own because then you don't have to do it's... too much networking because you're the host. <laughs> well, that's the point of it though, isn't it? Because you come across as really, you know, so you know you have to build the like, know and trust factor, mm. but if you're hosting your own, people are going to like you because, you know, you're a friendly person and, you know, you want to connect with people. Um, they're going to trust you because you're the person running the event and that automatically gives you a bit of street cred when it comes to, you know, hosting. You know, you've put it on, so they automatically give you a little bit more of that. It accelerates that trust factor, I suppose, um, you know, with that. And they're also getting to know you uh, more as well because you are the host and the, the public person. And I think the good thing about it in terms of being the host is too is it does give you access to kind of like every single person that went there as well. So if you're going to networking events, that's great, but you're probably just going to meet a couple of people there mm -hmm. and that's that's fine. But if you host your own, then you've automatically generated for yourself 65 new kind of contacts within your network now that you can kind of pick and choose who you want to follow up with and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I think... You know, this phenomenal Facebook group, a kick-ass networking event. Look at you, Jen. Okay. You're a new woman. <laughs> You're making me blush. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's lucky there's no video coming lucky on. Lucky there's this, no video. On videos we're talking. Oh, <laughs> uh, look, but yeah, so, I just, the, the, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, and I'm very thankful for you being in my ears with that because I would never have stepped out of my comfort zone, I don't think, without, you know, the little tips and tricks that you give every week on this great podcast. Oh, thanks, Jen. And I just want to say that I am so proud of you for what you've done for those 60 odd people that went to that networking event as well, because you provided an opportunity for them that they never would have had otherwise to meet other people. So, 
Good job, you. <laughs> Thanks, Gal. <girl. laughs> um, I just want to go into now a little bit of it because I come very much from a networking point of view and you come from a marketing point of view. And I've heard you a couple of times say things like it's all a part of marketing. And I just wanted to talk about where you think networking fits in with marketing. Um, where does network fit in with marketing? I guess networking is a great lead generator. Um, so it definitely fits in that spot there, but it kind of fit, it kind of fits in the whole process of it. If you, um, are having trouble on social media, just posting on your own Instagram or your own Facebook or your own LinkedIn, and you're not really getting a lot of traction out there. Well, the one way to combat that is to start networking online or offline, start going into Mm. other people's groups and giving some great tips and some great, great tricks you know no with no idea that you may or may not get something back but you know just giving your expertise out there for free in somebody else's Facebook group um go to a networking event if there isn't one make one um, <laughs> you, you know do something like that because you know then people get to you know like and trust you just like you said that's kind of the aim of the game is to get someone to know like and trust you because then they will come into your world it may not always turn into to dollars but there is always mm-hmm. the referral network as well of course you know they will, might necessarily refer you on to somebody else um so it's sort of networking I think people do a lot of networking without really thinking that they are actually networking I agree yeah I agree with you there because I often see a lot of people well I see a couple of different types of business owners I see some that will just networking kind of terrifies them a bit. They might be more of an introvert or, you know, yeah, yeah, like you, Jen. Um, they um, And they really go heavy on social media, particularly the marketing aspect of it there. And if they can kind of go through their business without actually having to speak to another human to get customers, then that's probably an avenue that they would take. And so I kind of look at it and I go, well, that's good if that's your option. But I feel like you kind of need to have both. Like for me, I think you really need to have a good, strong marketing um, strategy, but I think you also need a good, strong networking strategy as well. And people tend to think that networking is going to networking events and that's the only thing that networking is. But networking is just building those relationships and going to networking events is just one vehicle of being able to meet people. Whereas the, you know, online space is another area to meet people and and things like that. So I think you're right when you say that people don't realize they're networking. They actually are because even when you're, you know, you're just building genuine relationships, which, you know, everyone has done that before. Everyone has a best friend. Everyone, you know, everything started with saying hello to somebody and seeing where that relationship went to. So, yeah, I think you're right. People people think of networking and they go, oh, that's a networking event. I don't want to do that. But networking has so many different ways of building relationships that, um, and the online space, like you mentioned, which is exactly how we met, yes, um, is prime a normal option for people these days. <laughs> yeah, tick, <laughs> strategy tick, strategy tick. <laughs> so you've got a podcast called the Small Business Made Simple Podcast, and it's um, and a massively unexpected unexpectedly, I suppose, a viral Facebook group. Um, and you've held your first networking event. So what is next for you? <laughs> Sorry, I talk with my hands. You're probably watching my hands flap around. <laughs> What's next for me? Um, look, uh, a, a holiday. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. Um, look, you've been just, busy. Yeah, just building on what the foundations are there. I think, you know, um, my the Facebook group, like the Buy from the Bush Facebook group, I think is just something that can keep growing. I think that it won't just stay as a Facebook group. I can see it and it's a movement. It's not a movement I yeah. started, but it's a movement that is definitely attached to the train that I'm actually driving. And I think that in the country that we live in at the moment, which is just so amazing, I think are really starting to think about where their products come from and who they're supporting and things like that. So I think that will continue to grow with perhaps another podcast and website and directories and Google Maps and all things like that. Um, And my networking event, well, you know, the next one comes in May. Hopefully that will be Ah, just as successful. I'm going to run them quarterly. Um, Right. 
I, I love workshops. I love getting in front of uh, people um, face-to-face. So that's probably, you know, booking some more workshops in would be something that workshops. I would really love that. Speaking events, do you like speaking? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. you never never quite know where the next uh, big idea might come from big, in this I, little I know, brain. right, because you are an ideas woman, that's for sure. You're certainly an ideas woman. Um, <laughs> so what about that Facebook ads course? Is that making a reappearance or is that something that kind of people can access any time of the year? Yes, yeah, certainly people can access it any time of the year. It just sits on my website at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au and sits in the shop there. Um, will it make a reappearance? It definitely needs to make a reappearance. Yeah. Um, it's one of those, you know, it's, it's on the list, Cal. <laughs> yeah, on the list. <laughs> Yep. But I would like to, you Absolutely. know, perhaps another small social media course would be really good just to yeah. help reinforce some of those things that we talk about in the workshops and, you know, just to give a small business owners just you know, that little bit more help. I, I love it when I talk to a small business owner about social media and marketing and you see their eyes light up with that, oh, I get it now or, oh, yeah. I could do that. Like, I just love yeah. that. And I think what I love about the way that you teach people, because I've not been to your workshops, but I certainly listen to your podcast. And the thing that I love about your podcast is that it's very, very actionable. Like you can go and listen to other people that talk about kind of like broader strategies around social media or marketing. But when it comes to your podcast, it's so actionable. I remember listening to one of the earlier episodes I listened to was going and doing like a Facebook page audit. I think I think that's what it was, doing a Facebook page audit. And it was literally go up here, click this, do this, check that, you know. And it was such a great actionable kind of lesson for the small business owner. Like it was just, you know, as you say, small business made simple and your podcast really helps people take actionable steps and learn those things um, and be able to do them themselves. And I just, I, I really love that because when I watched a few of those episodes, I realized that there was things on my social media that weren't set to be most optimal or things that I completely miss because they change all the time. Mm. So I think I I can't say enough. If you're listening to this podcast today, (laughs) I would say definitely go and listen to the Small Business Made Simple podcast because you will, I guarantee you will pick up things that you can do in your business every single episode. So thank you very much for that that, that podcast, Jen. It's just perfect. (laughs) So before we finish off today, I just want to ask you a few quick questions. So what is a trend that you see happening or that you want to see happen in business in 2020? Um, Probably the trend that I want people to embrace most is a a drum that I beat often, the H to H, human to human. We've just got to, you know, social media um, is social. You've got to be on the platform to be social, just not to be selling or teaching, you know, get in there, interact with the people who want to know you more or who you would like to come into your world. But the whole human to human and I think social media has kind of come full circle it kind of was started off like that and then it got very business orientated and I think now um, to get any sort of organic traffic you just really have to be on the platform as a person who's willing to interact with other humans Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you and I have talked about this a little bit before and I know we've seen each other on social media with this, but I feel like I really, and I would like to have a whole episode to talk to you about this, about human to human Mm -hmm. um, marketing and interaction and social media strategies, because I do really feel like that's the for me, that's where things are going in business. Like we've had the the funnels and the automation and we've had a whole lot of things where we take the people out of business and all it's done is enable people that have those big internet and social media companies to be able to take control of what we do. So to be able to go back now and take that out of it and start building our own communities and forging our own destiny, I suppose, with that kind of thing is just, you know, by speaking and getting to know humans again and building (laughs) up those interpersonal skills again, Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just such a, I really, really hope that 2020, the decade of 2020, I really hope that that's the progression that it takes there. So I am with you with that one. Definitely. Like even in email marketing, like my... The email yes. marketing, I've changed up my email marketing in the last few months to be a lot more just 
a bit conversational, a little bit like the person yeah. I hope thinks that when they open it, it's just like, oh, you know, she's speaking directly to me, like changing yeah. that human to human, you know, just trying to do even that a little bit better. So yeah. you know, email marketing is certainly um, not dead and certainly something that can be harvested. Absolutely. And it is just that personal connection, isn't it? So, um, yes, we'll have a conversation about that. (laughs) So who would you like to connect with this year? It can be a person or a type of person. Who would you like to connect with? Um, Who would I like to connect with? I guess I would like more people to know about the movement of Buy From A Bush Business. So just before I came on this podcast, one of my friends, uh, Jules Brooks, who runs a PR firm, she's like, right, I need to get you on here, here and here. Like, yes. This is her so business, true. but she's, you know, she's a friend of mine. She's like, right, what can we do? I, so I, yeah. I would like people, more people to sort of know about the group through a PR type way. I think that that would Absolutely. be a piece of the puzzle that's probably missing. Um, and A, it's missing because I don't have time to do it. So at the end of the yeah, day, yeah. that's, um, you know, a job that is actually not reaching the top of the list. So, you know, pe- I don't know whether that is, you know, newspaper articles, radio, TV. I haven't really thought yeah, too much yeah. about that, but I would really like to get spread the word a little bit further um, through media about, and not just about my group, but about the movement that's actually happening. The cause, the movement. Mm, Yeah, mm, absolutely. Well, if any of you out there that listen to me are involved in the media in Australia or internationally, it doesn't matter where, um, then make sure you let Jen know and you follow her because I really do feel, I, I kind of feel like this, I'm expecting to see it everywhere. Like I really am because it's so successful. I can't think of another movement that has been more successful than this, than, a, you know, buy from the bush campaign or, you know, buy from a bush business. I can't think of one that's been that more that that's successful and aroused so much emotion from people that I am so surprised. Like I know that there's been a little bit of local interest and you have had some radio interviews and and, th- and TV and things like that, but on a national level, I mean, this campaign is changing the lives of so many people mm-hmm. that um, you know, it's phenomenal that I haven't seen more out there. So Jen Donovan, ladies and gentlemen, you make sure you contact her um, about that and we will see what we can do. So you can't achieve success like you have with your networking event and your buy from the bush business and your business and your podcast and your Facebook groups, all the things that you do without having people around you to support you. So who are the people that you lean on and the people that inspire you to do what you do and to get better in what you do every day? Oh, I have so many. You can name names if you want. You can say thank you. (laughs) I'm really, really lucky. Um, You know, my husband, I guess I should start with him. My husband is, you know, both a great support and also someone who takes my mind off what's actually happening as well. But I have, you know, I've met some amazing online people like yourself, Cal, and Jen Watterson, uh, who, you know, is another local lady who lives rurally, who's doing amazing things. Um, But then, you know, through business, I have found business besties like Michelle Clark, who yeah. has Judds in Yarrawonga when I was in retail. She was amazing and Jules at Airtree Resort. And it's just, I yeah. have this network of women around me and they're not all women. I shouldn't say that, but most of them are yeah. women who, yeah. you know, I, I send a grumpy text message to and get yes. you know, a funny emoji back, which cheers me up and keeps me going. And, oh, goodness, yeah. how could I forget, you know, the two amazing admins of Brooke and Jacinta who we have Absolutely. some pretty funny conversations go on because, yeah. you know, the group might look all rosy on the surface, but sometimes it it's not rosy and other times it is quite funny and we have a little bit of a giggle. Well, 200,000 people in a group, you're going to get people from all walks of life and you're going to get all sorts of situations. So, Mm -hmm. yes, and I think your moderators do a fantastic job, you know, within that group because there's so, you can see the volume of posts that go through there is phenomenal. So I'm so glad to see that you have this beautiful network of people around you and I think it's just such a nice way of doing business by having this support network and things like that, you know, people that you can go and talk to when things things are not always going great for business owners. Like they're really not, even as women, you're a mum as well. Like there's things that 
happen with family and things like that. You need people to lean on and to be able to, you know, be not having that bad day when you're having your bad day, you know, so they can be, they can lift you up and, and help you move on and, uh, and know that, you know, given a day or two, you'll be back to your same old self, you know, given a little bit of inspiration yeah. and to have that non-judgmental network around you is just, you know, they're friends that you take on this business journey for life with you. Yeah. And I guess, you know, that's you know, keeping it real as well. Like you know, you've said so many amazing things and it's a, you know, this podcast has been full of, you know, some amazing ideas and amazing growth, but there's, there's times where I'm literally crying on the couch or, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, yeah. close the computer, throw my arms in the air and say, ah, oh, that's it. I'm done. Like it's it? not, I don't yeah. live in a perfect world. Uh, and I think no. that sometimes is the trouble with social media is it does look yes. so polished and so perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's yeah. the network around you who, you know, it's just like, I, you know, I need a drink now who's coming. You yeah, know? It's yeah like, absolutely. I'm, I'm done. So it's not exactly. Perfect. I live a very imperfect life, um, but I have a You're great, human. Yeah, I am. And I have a great support network <laughs> who, uh, you know, will send me something really quite funny and, you know, move me on from my mood that I might be in. Jen, thank you so much for speaking with me today. You truly inspire me with your innovation and how proactive you are at making things happen, not only in your business, but all the help that you give business owners across Australia. You are really an example of what a person can do if they have a great idea and you're willing to put yourself out there. So I want to say thank you so much for your advice that you've given everyone today, for this open and honest conversation about the great things about business the things that are tough about business and the direction that we can expect things to go in. So what I would love for people to do is to know where to find you so they can go and follow your brilliance on social media. Uh, and Cal, it's been a pleasure to be your first guest as well. How a little bit exciting oh, know, is right? that? <laughs> the winner. Um, <laughs> Yay! Yep. So I. So besides my buy from a bush business, I actually have a social media and marketing group as yes. well. It's, it does yes. not have two hundred thousand members in it though. Um, but it's called Like Minded Business Owners, which you know, and that's the idea of it. Come yeah. and you know have a bit of a fun with some like minded business owners, and you know Beautiful. help each other out. So you can always have a look at that on Facebook. Otherwise, Instagram at Small Business Made Simple, and you know, you know have a listen to the podcast. Podcast, small business made simple and I would love for you to um, interact and let me know and if you've got any ideas for an episode you'd like me to do let me know those as well but you can find that at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash podcast and they all live there. Thank you so much Jen and we will make sure that for anyone listening today that all your social media links are posted in the show notes so that you don't have to remember all that. You can go and find them in the show notes and you'll be able to connect with Jen. So everyone listening today, what's your mission? Number one, go and follow Jen Donovan on social media and see firsthand someone that is creating their own innovative opportunities in business. Number two, think about your own business. Jen puts herself out there with the Buy From A Bush Business Facebook group. She puts herself out there when she decided to have her own networking event to connect with more people. What would you do in your own own business if you had a little bit of that extra courage. And I want you to go do that. And lastly, because I'm all about connection and helping each other learn, please share this episode with a business bestie today. Thanks very much for choosing to listen today and let's stay connected and we'll chat again next week. I really hope you enjoyed that episode and got a little more insight into the small business lady that you listen to all the time, me, and what and the fact that I'm really just like you, but perhaps just one or two steps ahead in some things. If you love this episode, I would really love for you to leave a rating and a review on both my podcast and Callie's podcast, again, because a rising tide lifts all boats. My dear friend Jules Brooke from She's the Boss TV show had a post up on the weekend in her group that said, Empowered women empower women. And I guess you could say empowered business owners empower business owners. And that's me. That's us. That's the goal. So thanks for listening to this bonus episode. I'll see you shortly again on episode 62. Uh, but go create reality from your dreams. And always remember, there is no point in dreaming small. Tell like a feeling, say it proud, be true.